Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Okay, so laws, sine, and cosines. I'm just going to go through each of the two laws and then an example of each one, and then we'll talk about area uh, rather quickly. So law of sines, it's basically formula you got to know. It's the ratio of the side divided by the sine of its opposing angle. So side A divided by sine of the angle opposite it is equal to the ratio of any other side divided by the sine of its opposing angle. So side B divided by the sine of the angle opposite it. And the letters themselves don't really mean anything. It's really the relationship to the side. So it's always the side over the sine of its opposite angle is equal to any other side divided by the sine of its opposite angle. Okay, in any triangle. So for example, we have um, this triangle uh, DEF, I give you the measure of angle D and E, and side F, and I ask you to find D to the nearest tenth. So what I'm going to do is sketch a triangle so I can get an image of what's going on here, and I'm going to fill in uh, those missing angles. So first off, I should probably name it DEF, um, so I'll call it DEF, this triangle is DEF, and then we have measure of angle D is 50 degrees, so this is 50. The measure of angle E is 95. Okay, I know that side F, that's the side opposite angle F, is 12.6, and I'm looking for side D to the nearest tenth. So this is side D. Well, I know that any side, so in this case D, divided by sine of the angle opposite it, which is 50 degrees here, is equal to any other side divided by sine of its opposite angle. Now, since I don't have side E, I'm not going to use angle E. I have side F, so I know that's going to be 12.6 divided by sine, and I need to find angle F. Well, since the sum of three angles in a triangle add up to 180, and the sum of these two is 145, I know that this angle will have to be 35 degrees in order to complete the 180 inside of this triangle. So this will be sine of 35 degrees. Okay, I'm going to solve for D. So D is equal to, by multiplying both sides by sine of 50, I don't know what that value is, but I know it definitely has a value. That will cancel over here, leaving me with D. And I'll have 12.6 times the sine of 50 divided by the sine of 35 degrees. Okay, so now we'll need to put that into the calculator. Okay, turn our calculator on. I'm going to type in 12.6 times the sine of 50 degrees divided by the sine of 35 degrees. Now, since this is in degrees, before I hit enter, I'm going to check my mode to make sure I'm in degree mode, and I am in degree mode. Okay, so to get out of that, you can hit second and then the quick key, and now I'm going to hit enter, and I got my value. So it's 16.82. I'm rounding to the nearest tenth. So since this is less than 5, this will round down to 8. So it's 16.8 is the length of my side D. Okay, and I'm going to check to see if I had any units. I don't have any units, so I'm just going to leave it as that value. Okay, so now law of cosines, it's similar. In fact, if you look at the law of cosines, it's, it's like law of sines, I'm going to use a cosine, but uh, it's not a ratio. It's actually the generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's just in non-right triangles, I have to account for this angle being not right. I have this extra term, which is minus 2AB times the cosine of C. Now, again, these uh, letters don't really mean anything. It's the relationship of the sides that's important. And the key thing to note is that the side here, C, which is isolated, notice that it's all A's and B's in terms of sides over here, the side C that's isolated is the one opposite the angle you're using. So if I'm using C, um, the C side isolated would be opposite this angle would be the angle I use. If it was A I was trying to find, I'd isolate A, put C here and C here, and then I'd use si uh, cosine of angle A here. So let's use, look at an example too. Okay, so now we're going to use my law of cosines to find um, the missing side uh, here, find the length of side B. So side B is opposite angle B would be right here. Now, here's my law of cosines. Now, this is just a general law of cosines, and these sides don't necessarily correspond to the sides I'm going to be using. 
So here's how to identify what to plug in. The angle I'm going to be using is this one, angle B. So side B, I'm plugging in angle B into this equation, side B, the one opposite that, will be the side that I have in isolation on that left-hand side. So I'll have B squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides, which is 9 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times the product of those two sides, times 9 times 4, times the cosine of the angle opposite this side, which is 135 degrees. Okay? So now I end up with b squared equals, well, 9 squared is 81, 4 squared is 16, so you add those together, you get 97, minus 2 times 9 is 18, and 18 times 4 is 72, cosine of 135 tells me that b squared is equal to, now if you take out a calculator, that might be convenient at this point. So I'm going to do 97 minus 72 cosine of 135 degrees. Now we know from before my calculator is already in degree mode, and I get 147.9116. Okay, so I'm going to write that down as a 147.9116. 0.9, and I'm going to put a dot, 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 because there are more values after this. Now, to avoid rounding errors, this is exactly what I'm going to do. Notice, in, in order to solve for b, I'm going to have to take the square roots of both sides, so I'm going to need a square root here, and I'm going to need a square root here. Okay? So I'll get an answer for b. But rather than rounding this off before I take the square root, I don't want to get any rounding errors, so what I'm going to do is hit second key, and then right here I'll get the square root button, and then to plug this entire value in, I'm going to hit the second key again, and then see this little ANS, it stands for answer, hit that, close my parentheses, and boom, I've now taken the square root of this entire number value without any rounding error. Now I will round to the nearest tenth, and since this ends in a six, this will round up, and I get 12.2. So it turns out that side B is 12.2 units. Okay, so that's law of sines and law of cosines as a general uh, way to figure out what you're using and when. Um, if you have three sides and you're trying to find an angle, you can use law of cosines. So this will get you an angle, this one. If I have two sides and an angle, this will get me the third side using law of cosines. Okay, so those are my two law of cosine situations. Law of sines, angle, side, angle, this will get me a, another side. If I use law of sines, angle, angle, side will get me another, I'm sorry, I had that backwards. This will get me another angle. Angle, side, angle will get me a, another side of the triangle. And angle, angle, side will also get me another side of the triangle. And the last case, side, side, angle, or angle, side, side, remember from last year's geometry is that does not determine a unique triangle, so this is the ambiguous case. Now, rather than going through all the different situations of the ambiguous case in this video, if you actually go to your textbook um, and look at example 4, 5, and 6 on page 594 and 595, your textbook does a really good job of going through each of the three situations of the ambiguous case. And those three situations are, you might actually have a triangle that ends up being no solution, or it's a triangle that can't exist, a unique triangle where you're able to find um, one angle, or you might end up with a triangle where you could possibly find two angles. So that's reviewed in your textbook on these two pages. So you can take a look at that um, just as a review for yourself. And then finally, we have area formulas. We've got, covered three types of area formulas of a triangle. Um, and which one you use depends on which situation you have. So the three area formulas are basically the one you're familiar with. It's half the base times the height. Now, an example of that would be the second one. I know what the height of this triangle is. I know the base is. So the area of this triangle will just be one half the base, which is four times the height, which is 2. Well, half of 2 is 1, so this area is just 4 units, or 4, I should say, feet squared. It's 4 square units. Um, the second one we talked about was uh, 1 half BC sine of A. So again, these 
uh, letters don't mean anything. It's two sides, B and C, and then sine of the angle between them. So here I have a side angle side situation. That is much like this one. So this would be area is 1 half A, which is 2, B, which is 4, times the sine of the angle between them, which is 50. So in this case, the area turns out to be 4 sine of 50. And if I want to know what that is, I can go to my calculator, type in 4 times the sine of 50 degrees, enter, and I get 3.06. So it's roughly 3.1 square feet. So a slightly smaller triangle. And then the last one is if I have three sides. Now, this is Heron's formula involving the S's. This S represents the sum of the sides divided by 2. So that's A plus B plus C divided by 2. You could also think of it as half the perimeter. So that would be a situation where I have all three sides, like this triangle. It's actually the most useful formula, because usually the easiest thing to measure in a triangle are its three sides. So if I wanted to determine um, exactly what the area of this triangle is, uh, here's what we can do. I'm going to first find S, which is 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is 7 plus 5, which give me 12. And I need to divide that perimeter by 2. So S is 6. <coughs> So then my area, using Heron's formula, is the square root of 6 times 6 minus 1 side. Well, 1 side is 4, so 6 minus 4 is 2. 6 minus another side, that'll give me 3. And 6 minus the third side, that'll give me 1. So the area of this triangle turns out to be the square root of 12 times 3 times 1, which is 36. So the area of this triangle is 6. Okay. If it turned out to not be a perfect square, you could reduce it to simplest radical form, but you're able to find the exact value um, of the area of that triangle. Are you telling me that this sucker is nuclear?